Good afternoon, my students, listeners, and viewers all over the globe. My name is Dr. Barbright. I am here to present one of our lecture series titled Microbial Environmental Monitoring. Okay. Next is uh, Microbial uh, Environmental Monitoring. So back to a little recap of our last lecture too. Environmental monitoring describes processes and activities that need to take place for monitoring uh, the quality of the environment. So the scope of this lecture is that we, it will include monitoring of all the environments and it also includes monitoring of all the water samples and surfaces. Classification of environmental monitoring. Environmental monitoring is classified basically into two. One is microbial control and then two particle control. The particle control. So we take it one after the other. The microbial monitoring now. It is a program designed to demonstrate the control of viable that is living organisms or microorganisms and non-viable particles in critical areas. The non-viable particles are like viruses and so on. So sources of microbial contamination. So in this case now, microbial contamination could emerge or come from air, from personnel, from equipment, from cleaning agents, from containers, water, and compressed gases, among other things. So any of these sources could be, could, uh, you know, microbes could come or emerge from them. So next we now look at where is uh, microbial monitoring carried out? When can it be carried out? What are we to achieve when we do microbial monitoring? Who and who are involved? during microbial monitoring. How do we carry out microbial monitoring? In order to answer this, the slide below shows it. We are now MFG, that is manufacturing area. So we carry out microbial monitoring, mostly in my, uh, uh, microbial environmental monitoring, mostly in uh, manufacturing what? Areas. Though it's not limited to manufacturing areas. Also when it can also be done, maybe when the air and the air, the air and surface monitoring should be conducted actively during the assertive process and operation. Personnel monitoring when the operator leaves the process area, product contact surface will be monitored at the end of the at the end of the filling operation. What are we to achieve? What we want to achieve during the microbial monitoring is to and uh, you know to achieve accuracy of a particular what area the accuracy of a particular area okay who and who are involved a trained personnel a trained microbiologist even you listening to me if you're a microbiologist you are involved or you are a potential microbiologist or a potential personnel for future uh, uh, endeavor then how do we kind out of we carry them as far current practices, SOPs, standard operating procedure, GMP, good manufacturing practices, GMP, good laboratory practices, protocols, documents. So every laboratory, they have their own document, GOPs, SOPs, and so you can follow suit wherever necessary, okay? Now, the next one is method for microbial monitoring. The method are divided into two, surface monitoring, air sampling. The surface monitoring is divided into four, the contact plate, swapping, touch plate, surface rays method. Why the air sampling is divided into two, active air sampling and passive air sampling. So under this now, we will not talk on the four surface monitoring method. We will discuss only two, and then the air sampling method. So next, we can see on this slide, the contact plate method. You can see this plate is a specialized plate, coded with a medium inside, but the medium is a selective one, medium. So in this case now, the contact plate method, surface sampling is performed using rodent plates. 
these plates are called rotor plates. It's a specialized, specialized plate, as I said initially. Usually, the medium pond here contains the triton soil agar and polysorbate 80, which you call twin 80, and lecithin. Lecithin is a selective uh, agent. Then, we have the contact plate. In this case now, further we discussed that by saying that the contact plates are pressed on to the area to be tested. So the area you want to be tested, you press them, you press them, you can see the contact, the other plates are pressed on the surface of that tube here. Then the, the surface are being wiped down with isopropyl alcohol, 70% of absolute ethanol as the case may be. To remove any residue left after exposing the plate on the contact, by having the contact with the surface, the plates are finally incubated for 48 hours at 30 to 35 for bacteria and 72 hours at 20 to 25 for what? Fungi. So we can use this method for testing products of contact surfaces, floors, walls, equipment on a regular basis. The swabbing method, the swabbing method in this case, the, the, we have swabs being formed in a container and there is medium inside. So the swab samples are collected by removing a sterile swab from a sterile tube. The selected surfaces are being rubbed by rubbing to and fro, back and forth across what, the surface. After sampling, the swab is being returned into the pre-label sampling tube, containing appropriate amount of liquid medium. So usually, this swab Lead or container, you know, it has a, a liquid medium, sterile liquid medium inside. It's just you can see it remember the normal uh, vaginal swab st uh, sticks, but a little bit different here. Contain medium, so we use it to test irregular surfaces. Some surfaces are not smooth and regular. So where we have irregular surfaces, the swab beam method can be what adopted. In the active air sampling, here we use a little centrifugal sampler. So in this case now, the air sampler is placed at the center of each room at a height approximately one meter above the what? Floor. The sampler, before we place it at the center, is being disinfected with ethanol before use for each location selected during sampling. So usually, under this centrifugal force, about one liter, 1,000 liters of air, it has capacity to accumulate about 1,000 liters of air into this uh, instrument, okay? Also, inside this instrument, before we start, you can see the image below. You know, we put what we call agar strips. Agar strips, are, is, uh, they, are, they are being placed inside before sampling. And at the end, we place it inside and begin to sample. Now, the, the, after this now, we remove it back. We remove this agar strip and then incubate them for 48 what? hours at 30 to 35 for bacteria and then 72 hours uh, at 20 to 25 for what? fungi alright, after incubation, colonies are counted and it's recorded in specific protocols depending on the protocol you are adopting okay, depending on the protocol you are adopting alright, the passive air sampling is the one we usually carry out in the lab here or your common labs, wherever you are. This one, medium are prepared in petri dish plate, then you turn to a PDA gar, whatever medium of interest, depending on science, scope or study. And then they is being performed by exposing to nine centimeter petri dish containing tipton soil agar medium to the air. The petri dish are finally covered after exposing them for a particular time. And then after the sampling, the plates are sealed with paraffin and incubated for 48 hours at 30 to 35 and 72 hours at 20 to 25 degree centigrade. So for bacteria, 48 hours, for fungi, 72 hours. Usually, like we said in our previous lecture that uh, they are recorded, colonies are recorded in specific protocols. So here we have a reference range of colony forming units for interpreting results. So, if you obtain 0 to 5 colonies, none or it we interpret it as none or very slight colonies. Excellent. 6 to 15 colonies, slightly good or considered good. 16 to 30 colonies, moderate, borderline acceptable. 31 to 50 colonies, significant or poor. 
results based on the sample greater than 50 heavy on unacceptable tnt too numerous to count unacceptable so the second aspect of environmental monitoring class classification is the particle monitoring here the particles are significant because they may enter a product or contaminated physically or by acting as vehicle for microorganisms biologically particles in the n3 air are retained by HEPA filters and particles in the clean room are removed by laminar air streams HEPA filters are able to retain at least 99.9 percent .9 of particulates greater than 0.3 micron in diameter so the regular integrity testing of HEPA filter is absolutely necessary. So here we use HEPA filters, we use filters to trap particles. To trap what? Particles. And look at the efficiency, 99.9%. .9 if we use a size, HEPA filter size of 0 0.3 what? Micron. Micron is 0 micro, micrometer. Micrometer is micron. So how do we now control these contaminants? either microbial or non-microbial particle or non-viable particles. So here we want to say here that contaminants are in fact the presence of anything in the manufactured product which should not be there. That is a very good definition. Contaminants can be product or substances other than product manufactured. Two, foreign products. Three, they can be particular matter, especially dangerous in injectables. Four, is the microorganism. Five, endo -ozins. So how do we control them? Okay, but before we look at how to control them, let's also look at the source of contamination. It can come from people and their activities, skin, plates, hair, saliva, clothing material, fingerprint, coffee, and the cosmetics. It can also come from accessory tools, equipment, glassware, trolleys. It can also come from the environment, what we call environmental contaminant, contaminants, like air, water, gases, chemicals, vapor, building materials, you know, to start the charge and so on. So, the next one below there is the relationship. How is contaminant? What is the relationship between contaminants? Between contaminants, okay? And contamination control. So we can see they can come from air to contaminate human. They can also go from human to go to the air. They can go from air to product or from products to air. You can see it in green. They can also go from product to surface in that red ink or from surface to product, vice versa. They can also go from surface to personnel in the blue or from the personnel back to the surface, right? So they can also go from air to surface and then from product to personnel, using, as you can see from that arrow. But they are reversible. They are what? Reversible. So their the relationship is reversible relationship, as can be seen in that chart. Okay? Types of contaminants. Contaminants are divided into three. We have the particulate contaminant, which contain the non viable particle and the viable particle. We have the physical contaminant, that can contain temperature, pressure, radiation, vibration, and we can also have the chemical contaminant, which can come from other contaminants that are not solid. Okay? What are the effects of this contaminant? Contamination poses significant risks to technical processes, experiment, or production activities, as well as the individual involved. Unguided population of contamination can lead to product damage, yield reduction. I put out the call and order. How do we now control contamination? It's important we control them from source, like human source, which is the personnel, from access to tools and equipment, and from the environment. So these are the major, three major ways of controlling contamination: the human, access, and what environment. You can see from the humans here. You see they are highly kitted there. So through training, through education, through you to cover the hair face masks, plastic boots, disinfectant soap, goggles, air showers, gowning, gowning rooms, and so on and uh, so forth. Lab coats and the rest of them. So, from accessories, apart from human, another common way of contamination enters through the waste of trolleys used to transfer equipment. To prevent air contamination, high efficiency particulate air, which is HEPA. So the acronym, the acronym HEPA stands for high efficiency particulate what? Air filters. So air locks, clean room suits are used. In order to control the contaminant from glassware, glassware is sterilized under suitable condition, which have, which with the help of appropriate techniques. So accessories, glassware, scissors, uh, any accessories or tool you use for the monitoring, it's important we do what? We sterilize them. 
to minimize or remove contamination. Then the environment is also important. Here the environments are created with centralized air handling of fan filters. They are kept clean, regular complete grounding is important, careful material equipment selection to maintain class. The benches are clean, maybe you can use a horizontal and vertical laminar flow to minimize contamination in the lab. Isolators are used, glove box provide better protection from outside contamination. So the environment where the monitoring will be carried out, analysis will be carried out, is also important to be kept clean and disinfected and what? Sterilized to minimize contamination. So these are the three means of preventing contamination from personnel, from accessories and tools, and then from the what? Environment. So uh, contamination can be measured. So we can measure contamination using any of these using a lesser particle counter. You can use it to measure particles. So particle contamination can be measured using lesser particle counter. So this lesser, like all these uh, ones that make use of all these uh, alpha, beta, beta and the gamma the counters. So we use them also to measure particles. Microbial contamination can be measured using centrifugal sampler, like that machine I showed you, settle plates, method, contact plate, sampling, swabbing, like here, that I have said initially, this is the centrifugal sampler, okay? Uh -huh. The swabbing, the contact plate, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and so on, as you can see here. All right, so you see, so requirement for preventing or uh, for preventing contamination protocols. So, several requirements are uh, you see, for, for preventing contamination through cleaning, cleaning of surface, vacuuming, wipe. Wet by wiping, cleaning liquids, material solution. So, general requirement will minimize contaminant through no smoking, no cosmetic, avoidance of high particulate material like wool, sweaters, cover up. You know, cover skin can lead to more contamination. Cover and body with lab coat, gown, laboratory goggles, hand gloves, lab uh, feet wears, and so on. So, so that is. You can see that as part of the requirement to prevent uh, contamination, uh, as I have mentioned, is very, very important. Okay? Now we look at source. The source is very important. That is the human source, the environmental source, and the accessories. They are very, very what? important in preventing uh, contamination. So, this, in this lecture, which uh, particularly is on microbial uh, mental monitoring, okay, which is a major emphasis, with, which also delve into the non microbial, like the viral, the viral, the non viable or articulate here in this case. We now see that it's important to monitor this, and there are different techniques to what adopt, ranging from active to what to passive method. So, they are very, very important to adopt it. This. So, as potential microbiologists, this lecture is part of the training to equip you into the future. So that anywhere you see yourself, you can easily what adapt and begin to work depending on the SOP, the standard operating procedure, of good laboratory practice, documents being established by that laboratory, and their standards. Okay, and then you report appropriately. Just like we gave you those uh, microbial count ranges where you can make your judgment or decision as the case may be. So if you enjoy our lecture on this environmental microbial environmental monitoring, we want to ask that you subscribe, like, comment, okay, and possibly share our lecture video. I want to thank you very much for, for giving us audience. And God bless you. Bye.